This is me, a standard level 200 tower defense simulator player, and this is multi pillars a brand new account I made with which I'm going to be attempting to fully pay to win by spending $100 to get some of the best towers and items early to test a few things with the objective to find out if all that money is really worth it. I do not recommend this at all. Firstly, I had to decide how to divide the money, as TDS has a lot of stuff to purchase. I decided to immediately get Engineer, the most expensive tower in the game and probably the single most pay to win. I also went to buy some coins, more specifically about 50,000 of them, and to finish off my loadout I decided to buy the Pursuit Game Pass and add in Farm. I now had a ton of options for towers and skin crates, like with the Lovely Crate, which I decided to open in order to get a skin for the freshly obtained engineer, being an edgy take on this tower with an abyssal shroud across the face and some dark clothes, a similar style to this guy who laughed at me for being paid to win because it is generally looked down upon by the majority of the community since you didn't really spend those 20 hours in hardcore so, so does it really count? As I played through these games I was curious to see how different people would react but this first encounter didn't bode well. For the initial game I wanted to try a special mode since I thought it would be pretty funny to beat one while being level 0. Unfortunately, there was a pretty major problem, namely this barrier blocking low level players from the harder modes. So I had to use some of the coins I bought to get the comeback emote, which is actually glitchy enough to allow you to clip through walls. However, there is another check in the statues themselves, meaning I couldn't play Polluted Wastelands or Badlands. Yet, for whatever reason, this check wasn't in place for the third statue. So, as a level 0 player, I smuggled myself into a pizza party game with my high tier loadout. My team placed some cowboys for early defense, and I started to farm. We leaked a few zombies, but for how early it was, that wasn't too big a problem. I got enough money for Engineer by Wave 7 as SVIP placed Shotgunner. The problem with this run was that I was paired with fellow low level players, and as a whole, we didn't have that many great towers. We killed the scout bosses, and upon reaching the mid game, got some of our best options placed down in turret and ranger, taking down the first shotgunner puppet in comfortable fashion. The next one in a bit more tense manner, but the one after that, uh, we didn't have enough power, and thanks to its mutated health buff, it casually sauntered past our towers and killed us. I probably should not have farmed as much as I did, but with all the money I'd wasted, I just wanted to recoup a little. Please subscribe. Having gained a few levels, I was still curious how people would react to my loadout. This medieval knight character seemed confused and a little apathetic towards me. These two people laughed at me a bit. These two played the role of an angel and a devil on my shoulder, simultaneously consoling and scolding me. This big group didn't seem very impressed with the loadout, but well, this guy actually complimented my engineering game. Goobert called me out, but then wanted to play a match with me, so we tried to duo Fallen. It didn't go very well. With him bringing a fully offensive, completely unbalanced team, he was friendly in game low, and in general I didn't receive as much flack as I thought I would. The majority of people just didn't really care about what I had bought, who zombies certainly didn't, with this duo attempt not going as I had hoped, with us losing at wave 25 to the shadow boss, a zombie that still wasn't really as powerful as the puppets. So I decided to try again to get a win on that mode, now being level 2. I adopted a similar game plan, but this time my team had generally worse towers, and our early defense consisted of a commander. This attempt was doomed from the start, as we were no match for the buffed puppet zombies like the symbol monkeys who killed us in wave 21. But I mean, surely third time's a charm. Right? Our team composition here was certainly the best yet, as we had Trevor, a high level teammate who had brought Accelerator, however we also had a definite weaker start, taking 118 damage from an ordinary scout boss, cowboys, minis, and engineers were enough for us to scrape by until wave 19, where that first excel was placed. But I was worried about the balloon boys, requiring flight detection, such as with towers like Ranger, which I got two of to complement Trevor's pursuits. The zombies flew deceptively far along the path, but we weren't in any real danger which couldn't be said of wave 30, where a puppet themed after commander spawned, yet its health was not too inflated, and while it used its scuffed call of arms ability, we had the real one, an easy matchup. Yet this was only a feint by the game, as next wave things escalated with three shotgunners, and in a rather undramatic fashion, they again ended the run. Shotgunner is not really this strong. This was emblematic of a larger problem with paying to win. You're still gonna be paired with teammates who haven't spent money, and one person with stronger towers is not enough to carry your run. 
or is it? While Pizza Party might be impossible, what about Fallen? Now I couldn't actually pick the game mode, so I got into a trio game with Sar and Viral. They placed soldiers, which didn't animate correctly, taking down the zombies, which didn't animate correctly. This whole account was kinda cursed. As I farmed for engineers, after the Pizza Party games I had learned my lesson and brought DJ, which I quickly upgraded for the discount, before going ham on NGs, placing as many as I could before the mid game. The glitches went down quickly, but I was worried about the tank, the well established run ender in wave 30. Sar used Call of Arms, and we killed it. From there I maxed farms and began to mirror that with the engineers. This is where the pay to win power difference really showed for the first time, as without this tower we certainly would have struggled at this point in the game, and I was surprised by just how strong a single engineer player was, letting us reach the final wave, letting us easily take down the boss. In a fashion, I would definitely consider a pay to win victory, with my new account beating Fallen Mode before I was even supposed to be able to play it. Was all this worth it? After all, you know, I did get some good- No! I was not even successful in winning the mode I wanted to, and while I could buy good towers, I couldn't level up faster. In general, it doesn't really make sense to buy all this stuff, just to play a regular molten game anyways. I only did this for the content, so please subscribe. If you watch my videos and think you are, maybe double check. Anyways, thanks for watching. See ya.